grazie. Buongiorno a tutti, benvenuti. A warm welcome to everybody. I'm Cristiana Giaccardi, sono Cristiana Giaccardi, direttrice operativa di Castellinaria. Farò una breve introduzione in italiano e in inglese per il pubblico in sala, per il pubblico che ci segue in streaming. I will do a short introduction in Italian and in English for the public in the room and for the public in streaming. La conferenza avrà luogo poi in inglese. The conference is in English. Questa conferenza è stata ideata lo scorso anno partecipando a numerose conferenze internazionali, eh, tra cui una in particolare eh, organizzata da Alechino, eh, il cui direttore Jerzy Moscovitz sarà con noi oggi. E abbiamo pensato, eh, osservando quello che succede in Europa eh, nell'ambito della mediazione culturale, di creare uno spazio di condivisione e di discussione proprio qui a Bellinzona, se possibile in persona. E ce l'abbiamo fatta in parte, abbiamo degli ospiti di persona, abbiamo anche un ospite che ci segue in Zoom, quindi uh, assisteremo a una conferenza in formato ibrido. Uh, this conference was so the last year uh, when participating to other international conferences we noticed that in Europe there were a lot of movements regarding uh, film literacy in other festivals and um, we saw uh, in particular a conference uh, organized by Ilja Moskovitz of Alekino who will be in Zoom with us today. And seeing all those uh, movements through Europe, we thought to create a space of discussion and uh, a space where to share the best practices of film literacy in Bellinzona. We wanted to do it in person and we made it. We have uh, four speakers in person here in Bellinzona, but we are also hybrid. So uh, Mr. Moscovitz is following us and we speak from Poland in Zoom. Oggi daremo la parola ad alcuni dei più importanti festival europei per ragazzi e andremo a scoprire che cosa succede nell'ambito della mediazione culturale. E dopo la pausa apriremo una discussione alla quale siete tutti invitati qui a partecipare. Uh, we will hear uh, the representative of the most important film festival for youth and, and children in Europe and we will discover with them what is happening in Europe in this moment and uh, we will open in the second part an open discussion and uh, the people here in the room will be able to interact and ask questions. So, uh, il piano è che ora avremo una presentazione dei festival presenti alla discussione fino alle ore uh, 14.45, poi ci sarà una pausa di mezz'ora e alle 15.15 .15 riprenderemo per una discussione aperta tutti insieme. The planning today is that now we will see the presentation of all the invited festivals and we will have a break at 2.45, and we will begin again at uh, 3.15 with an open discussion about film literacy. And um, now, in English, I just introduce you um, those um, speakers that we invited, and we have really the pleasure to welcome in Bellinzona. Um, Simone Moraldi, is project manager of the Cineteca Milano and he will moderate this meeting. Daniel Lundquist is head of programming at the Boeuf Film Festival in Malmö, Sweden. Jaroslava Hinstova is head of programming at the Slin Film Festival in the Czech Republic. Jerzy Moskowitz in uh, there in uh, Zoom connection is director of Alekino Festival in Poland. Rian Vogel is responsible of the education department at the Cinekid in the Netherlands, and Arba Atashi is the director of the Anibar Animation Festival in Kosovo. So thank you very much, and now I give uh, the word to Flavia Marone, president of the festival. Ora do la parola a Flavia Marone, presidente del festival, per un saluto ufficiale. Grazie a tutti. Welcome here in Bellinzona. Welcome here in Bellinzona. Bienvenue a Bellinzona pour les gens qui sont en streaming. Buongiorno a tutti. 
Per me è un estremo piacere salutarvi a nome di Castelli in Aria a questa nuova iniziativa di Castelli in Europe. In questo momento noi siamo collegati con tutto il resto dell'Europa e per noi è un motivo di orgoglio e all the Europe in this moment is here in Bellinzona and uh, we enjoy for this uh, and I hope that you have a grateful afternoon and a, a very good job and I also that in the future we continue to be Um, all together for the, the kids and for the film. Then thank you for being here. Thank you for being connected uh, by streaming from Poland. And thank you everybody that uh, are here with us in streaming. Have a good afternoon and a good job. Grazie mille, thank you very much, and I give the word to Simone Moraldi, the moderator of the conference. Grazie mille Cristiana, grazie Flavia, eh, grazie a tutti per, per questo invito a Castellinaria. Thanks Cristiana, thanks Flavia, thanks for this invitation. Uh, I've been already introduced, my name is Simone Moraldi and I'm here on behalf of Cineteca Italiana di Milano. Sono Simone Moraldi e rappresento Cineteca Italiana <coughs> di Milano e it's a real pleasure for me to moderate this panel and I hope it will be of interest for, for everyone uh, the program of the conference has been already uh, drafted abbiamo già un po' introdotto il programma della conferenza e prima di dare la parola ai, uh, prima di iniziare proprio effettivamente la conferenza before starting the conference i would like to introduce a little uh, the topic of, uh, of our debate because we are in a very particular period now for uh, cinema, for film festivals and for film education. Siamo in un periodo molto particolare, come immaginerete, per quanto riguarda l'educazione al cinema, per quanto riguarda i festival e per quanto riguarda il cinema in generale. In, in the last two years uh, there has been a critical uh, situation that has uh, led to a weakness, weakening, uh, an overall weakening of the relationship between cinema and the audience. È un periodo in cui si è assistito a un progressivo indebolimento, a una progressiva perdita di un rapporto che c'è tra il cinema e soprattutto con le giovani generazioni, che era un rapporto già difficoltoso eh, prima, prima, it was a relationship that was already critical before the pandemic. This panel uh, is around three important topics that are crucial now in developing a new strategy, new vision for promoting art house cinema to younger audiences. Questo panel arriva in un momento in cui è strategico e fondamentale, a mio avviso, eh, costruire un nuovo piano, una nuova strategia per riavvicinare i giovani al cinema, soprattutto il cinema d'arte di qualità. Uh, che è un prodotto che uh, non sempre diciamo, è nelle corde which is a product which is not typically uh, uh, researched by younger audiences e i tre punti fondamentali intorno a cui quindi ruoterà il dibattito sono la mediazione culturale l'educazione al cinema e tutti quegli strumenti quindi che servono a riavvicinare il pubblico giovane al cinema e il ruolo dei festival so the main topics for this conference is around cultural mediation as a tool uh, that is able to recreate this link between uh, audiences and cinema in a period in which this relationship has been a little compromised. Film literacy and film education, which are uh, a domain in which those uh, objectives are, very, uh, are a real priority and that offers important resources for pursuing those objectives and the role of the festivals across Europe and we have such a, uh, an important and relevant bunch of speakers that today will help us in getting through new ideas and new strategies in order to recreate this relationship. So thank you very much for Castellinaria for developing such a strategic moment of reflection. Grazie a Castellinaria per aver sviluppato un momento di riflessione così strategico e così importante in questo periodo. And now, uh, I don't steal any more time to the presentations. There will be a very first phase in which all the speakers will introduce their activities, uh, and in particular, their educational activities. 
c'è un momento iniziale che sarà in inglese, adesso smetterò di tradurmi da solo in simultanea. I will start translating myself autonomously <laughs> in real time, uh, in, in cui uh, introdurranno, ciascuno introdurrà l'attività del proprio festival, soprattutto in relazione a questioni, diciamo, educative. So, uh, first speaker is Daniel Lundqvist uh, from BUFF Malmö uh, Festival for Young, uh, young Audiences. So, Daniel, uh, the floor is yours. I recommend you to stay within 10-12 minutes in order to let everyone have the space to discuss. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Um, I will now tell you everything about uh, Booth Malmö Film Festival in 10-12 uh, minutes. And uh, we're starting with a geography lesson, as you can see here on the map. Uh, Booth is located in uh, Malmö, in the south of Sweden. Um, it's the third biggest city in Sweden. It's very close to Denmark and uh, Copenhagen, which we can uh, reach uh, by the bridge in only 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, Malmö has about uh, 350,000 uh, inhabitants. And it's a very young city, if you look at the population. Uh, half of the population is younger than uh, 35 years old, and 21% of the inhabitants are younger than 18. So this is a very good place, I would say, for a festival uh, focusing on uh, children and young people. And uh, Malmö is also a very uh, multicultural city with inhabitants from 179 uh, different countries and one third of the inhabitants are born uh, uh, outside of Sweden, which makes uh, the city the most uh, multicultural in Sweden. So that is also something that we have to uh, uh, work with and, uh, and uh, it is important for us in uh, our uh, everyday work with the festival. Uh, so, in uh, 1984, the first edition of Woof took place, and uh, the idea was to uh, offer a greater variety of films for uh, children and young people, and a big part of the festival was uh, targeting uh, schools. This is uh, an article from the newspaper in 1984, where you can uh, read that uh, funny movies attracted the most uh, the audience were queuing for the famous movies based on books by the Swedish author Astrid Lindgren, such as uh, Pippi Longstocking and uh, The Brothers Lionheart. But you could read in this article that uh, the movies from the Eastern Europe, Europe they were not so popular. Uh, there was a film called uh, The Sugar Cabin from Czechoslovakia about the poor girl Ondra who has lost uh, her uh, father in the war who attracted only six visitors. Now, 39 years later, uh, Booth has grown into a bigger event with uh, a lot of uh, film screenings, both for schools and for the public uh, audience. We also have a, an industry program for professionals uh, working with films and moving images connected to children and young people. Uh, a lot of them are teachers or other people working with film education. Uh, and today we also have a lot of activities during the year, uh, so it's not only the festival week. We are a non-profit organization and we have this mission to uh, strengthen children and young people by giving them important uh, film experiences that crea can create good conditions for an increased self-understanding and a feeling of being included in the society. And we mainly do that by uh, select and, uh, selecting and screening films that are taking the young audience seriously and uh, opens up for a greater understanding of themselves, their lives, and the world they live in. And with our uh, industry and educational focus, we also aim to inspire filmmakers, teachers, and uh, providers of content for a young audience. 
a lot of things are happening during the six days of the festival. Uh, we do not only screen films, but also arrange workshops and seminars. Uh, for many years, we have hosted the annual Film in School Day, which uh, is uh, arranged by the Swedish Film Institute in collaboration with the regional uh, partner, uh, Film in Skåne. Uh, and we try to encourage uh, the teachers to, uh, to work with the films that we screen in different ways. So we send out information uh, before the uh, festival. We do uh, introductions to, uh, to uh, all of the films. We make uh, our own study guides uh, for some of the films. And after many of the screenings, we have Q and A's with filmmakers or sometimes with uh, other persons uh, connected to the theme of a film, it could be someone working with uh, environmental protection or a police officer, or sometimes it could be a person from a specific country or a blind person, or we, we always try to, uh, to find uh, different uh, angles of how we can use the film as uh, a starting point for a discussion with, uh, with the children. And one of the most challenging but important tasks uh, is to uh, attract young people to visit the festival uh, in their free time. And uh, uh, to reach them, we do a lot of different collaboration. We invite uh, different uh, famous persons from uh, TV or YouTube. And we aim to create uh, an event that is uh, the most fun week of the year for uh, the young, uh, for all young persons interested in film. And during the year, we're working with our own film distribution. So the films we have found and are screening at the festivals will not only be available for a limited audience during the festival week, but they can also be screened during the rest uh, of the year for uh, children and young people uh, outside of um, Malmö. We have started up our film club uh, for teenagers, which is now, uh, we're not trying to uh, expand it, so it's uh, going to grow outside of uh, the city of Malmö. And we're also doing uh, other things such as Buffelusk, which, which is a, a streaming platform for hospitals, uh, so children who cannot, uh, who are sick and cannot uh, visit the festival, they can watch some of the films from the festival uh, on this uh, streaming platform. So, uh, one of the things we have developed a lot since the start of the festival is the film program. And uh, it is important for us to show films that complement all the films that are already out there and easy to access. Um, and we also want to challenge the expectations of uh, what is uh, a, a children's film uh, or what is a youth film and uh, show the audience that uh, it can be a lot of different things. Uh, it's not only one type of film and it, it's not only one uh, genre. It, it, uh, it can be uh, a lot of different things. And, and we talk about uh, a film that is 100% buff. It, it is a film with a clear young perspective, which means that it's a, it's a story told from the eye level of a, a child or a teenager. It is also a film that takes the young audience seriously, uh, which means that the story has something important to say, but also that uh, artistic level is high, the quality of the film uh, should be just as high as a uh, film for an adult audience. Uh, it is also important to have a diverse film program, so every child or teenager should feel uh, represented in, uh, in our program. Uh, and it's especially important to show stories uh, that are norm breaking and open up for new perspective. And since 2005, we have an equal film program, which means we also look who is behind the camera and we screen, uh, we have 50% of the films we screen uh, have a female director. And finally, 
uh, I would like to say something, if I have time left, uh, about film education in Sweden. And if you look at uh, curriculums for uh, primary schools, uh, film has uh, a peripheral part. There are formulas about film literacy in the subjects of Swedish and art education, but the most important formulas are the most um, uh, the more general formulas uh, about basic values or principles about identity development and about understanding of the surrounding world, which are central formulas uh, in the curriculum and should be central for all subjects in school. So on one hand, it's good that we have these general formulas, but on the other hand, we can see that it leads to an unequal presence of uh, film in, uh, in schools. We see a lot of project-based film education and education based on dedicated teachers, uh, so-called enthusiasts. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not an equal uh, film education. It's, it's very much depending on uh, which school you are, uh, you are at as a student. And uh, for me, it's surprising that film doesn't have a more significant position in the curriculums. Uh, it is the most uh, popular art form, but it's clear that it, it doesn't have the same status as uh, literature, music, art, and theater. And at the same time, film has a totally different presence in uh, our everyday lives, and especially if you uh, look at the everyday lives of uh, children and the teenagers. Moving images are everywhere. Uh, yeah, from a very young age, moving images are even in our pockets nowadays. Um, so uh, I would say that uh, from my perspective, it's, it is more necessary than ever with education about moving images uh, and how to analyze film and different messages uh, also in social media and uh, in, in, in the news, for example. And it's necessary for the democracy. And here is my contact information and also information about the next edition of Buff. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks especially for being so precise on the timings. That's really appreciated because we would like to give the word to everyone and talking about democracy. It's very important to have uh, good timings. So thanks a lot also for reminding us that one of the key aspects of film education nowadays is the fact that image has become much more present in everyday life. Uh, Lino Michike in Italy 20 years ago wrote that every person watched around 600,000 images per year, which is completely different than 30, 20 years ago. It's, it's changing very... I cannot imagine calculation made today. It was done before the, before the internet. So uh, it, thank you for reminding us this uh, important, important aspect of the question. And thanks for putting on the table lots of questions, especially related to school, inclusion, and how to connect film education and festivals to other value chains uh, represented, such questions that will be discussed in second part of the conference. And thanks a lot for it's It's OK. I go on. Okay. Thanks. Uh, perhaps I was too close. Can you hear me this way? Okay. Um, okay, so I give the word to the second speaker, which is right here, uh, Rian Vögel from Chinekid from the Netherlands. Uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I thought maybe before I start talking... Um, oh, it's here. Okay. It's here as well. Okay, great. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just show you a, a clip from our uh, festival, which was a few weeks ago, because I think uh, images show a lot more than, uh, than my words. So uh, let's see. And I think it's without music because if it's with music, we have a problem with the YouTube and the streaming part. So let's see if this works.
so that was with music. I hope it all uh, <laughs> works for the people at home as well. Uh, yeah, so our main goal is to, to actively involve children in high quality uh, media, and we see media in the broad way, so it's film, but also uh, new media, digital cu culture. And uh, we want to stimulate the production of the high quality media, as well as let the children themselves uh, contribute to the creation of, the, of this media. Um, where can I see my presentation now? Over there, okay. Um, it's okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll manage. Um, so we had our 35th uh, edition a few weeks ago, so we're almost, almost the same, same age as uh, Castellaria, which is nice. Uh, the festival takes place in around 30 locations uh, in the Netherlands and online uh, via Cinekit Play, our online platform. And in total, we have around 500 media productions uh, from short films to documentaries, feature films, VR, interactive uh, installations. Uh, we have around 65,000 uh, festival visits each year uh, with around 600 plus uh, attending professionals. And next to the festival, we also have a year-round reach of around uh, 150,000 children. So let's talk about uh, the education uh, program for today. Um, I think, maybe let me check if there's, no, I thought there was a clip after this, but we're going to do that later. Um, it's a clip. Yeah, I thought there was, should be a clip here. It's okay. Uh, so the, the week before the festival, we organize a program for schools. Uh, we organize it in three different locations in, uh, in Amsterdam for five days in a row. So this year we reached uh, more than 5,000 uh, children with this program and even more throughout the country. And I think that the, the clip is uh, after this slide, actually. Uh, so this is a clip of, a, of a one day of our school program. It's a short clip. Let's see. Okay, so in short, what we do during the, the festival, uh, so we start, uh, we develop digital teaching materials for schools, uh, which the teachers do themselves before the visit to our festival, and the materials exist of uh, different fragments of the film, images, sounds, and that helps students to, to activate a critical and creative way of watching the film, so this is before the visit to the festival. Um, and then, of course, we have the film screening uh, itself. And after the film screening, we always organize an interactive program in the venue directly after the screening. And we do that to give like a, a playful insight into, into filmmaking. So for example, on the picture you see on the, on the left, you, you see a, a Foley uh, artist who will uh, start making live sounds with them of the film they just saw in the venue. So they get a, like a playful understanding of what it can mean to make, make films. And also they visit our media lab, which is a, a, a big area where they get one and a half hour filmed with media workshops, installations, uh, VR, etc. cetera. Um, well, another thing we do during the festival is a more intensive project because we think it's important not to see them only as visitors, but also as participants really of the, of the festival. Um, so what we do is a four-week program uh, in a run-up to the festival where children make their own films and they get workshops from filmmakers uh, in the classroom. And then they see their, their films in local theaters, so it premieres there. 
uh, together with uh, with professional uh, 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 films made. So they they really feel like it's it's their own uh, festival, and then. Um, they will uh, win one film of every school and they will take part in the national competition, competition Search by Kids during our festival. So it's really connected to, uh, to our festival. Um, then we also have our uh, year-round program. So we offer different film and media workshops in schools and other educational contexts, film screenings and teacher trainings uh, throughout the uh, Netherlands. And then... In addition, in addition to that, we also have our online uh, offer, which, which has, of course, grown uh, last year, a lot, the last two years. Uh, so we use a digital platform called uh, Lesson Up, where we offer les lessons for age group 4 till 14. And our focus in these lessons is, is short films, because they are most easily shown in a, in a school, school context because of their duration. So all the lessons take around 50 minutes and consist of one or more uh, short films. And last year we also launched our online platform Cinekit Play and we are now thinking about how to make this accessible for, for schools uh, year round. Uh, and next to that, uh, apart from having our own platforms, we also try to uh, bring context to online plat platforms where teachers already can be found. For example, uh, what you see on the left, Schoola. Uh, which is an online tool already used by like 30,000 teachers uh, throughout the country, which now has a, a series on uh, film lessons from, uh, from Cinekit. Uh, and I think that was the last slide. So thank you for listening. Thanks, Rianne. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, I will quickly give the words and evoca <laughs> evocate Jerzy Morkowitz, Moskowitz, uh, Morkowitz from uh, Alekino, which is in the big screen. I don't know if, uh, Jerzy, you can hear us. Ah, here you are. Hi, we cannot hear you. Uh, Yerzi, we cannot hear you. I don't know if you have your audio settings correctly done. Can you hear me now, please? Yes, perfectly. Okay, Thanks thank you. Yeah, I was unmuted, but, but it should work anyway. Okay, that's good. Uh, okay. Jerzy Morkowitz from Alekino Festival that was already mentioned by Christiana in Poznan, in Poland. And thanks, uh, Jerzy, for connecting. We know your festival is in a very short time <laughs> this year. So uh, welcome here, and the floor is yours. Okay, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you very much, indeed. Uh, I would like first to thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, seminar. It's a honor. And uh, I would like to mention that the situation is quite unusual for me because as the director of the film festival, usually I'm sitting on the audience and today I'm on the screen that uh, I feel like an actor and I feel quite a uh, stage fright. So I hope I will manage it. Uh, I will try to share now with you my presentation. Just a second. Uh, this is uh, number one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, can you see it please? I hope so. Oh, just a second. It is not shared, I believe, or it is. Yes, I. Uh, well, it's, I can see yeah. it in my computer, but it's not. Okay. Now it should be. Now okay. it should work. Here it is. Okay, oh, go okay. on. It's okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for this small technical problems. So, Alekino Festival is a huge film festival organized by Children's Arts Center in Poznan, Poland a local government cultural institution. And uh, if you don't mind, I would like to give you some information about this institution, about its mission, because it brings a kind of light on our concept, how to arrange, how to organize, how to arrange the, also the content of the film festival for children. So the mission of Alekino is to inspire creativity for children and youth, promote new valuable artistic phenomena, popularize and support the development of new methods of cultural education of the young generations 
and to create artistic and educational events. Uh, two of these events, the, the most important ones, are Festival Alekino and on the same level of the organization, Biennial of Art for Children. That's not only the every two years festival, but also the two years project, uh, which has some aspects in art, but also in, uh, in science. Uh, coming back to the festival, our motto that's also for whole children's art center could be a child as a partner in the conversation about important matters through art, through films. And in this understanding, Alekino performs many educational functions because of the very fact of presenting to the young audience films of high artistic and substantive qualities. Of course, festival, it's not only the, the films, it's more, uh, uh, but what we are doing at the festival, I mean, all these activities serve uh, to educate the children for the cinema and through the cinema. I will come back to this a little bit later. Film education at the festival takes place on every possible uh, age of the participants. Here on the left, you have the, you, you could see the youngest ones participating in our film projects. And on the right, the older ones, uh, the, the short information about these two people because they are quite important for Alekino and for Polish film culture. Uh, these people are the, the, the holders of the world record of uh, number of films watched in whole their life. It's, it's not a joke. They, for whole their life, they use their, they were the, the, the couple, they used to watch at least one movie a day, usually two or even three, and they score only the films seen in the cinema. They didn't score the films seen in the internet on in television. Uh, and they really played a kind of important role in popularization of children's cinema because they are, were also passionate about the children's films. Ah, uh, what's what could be very important is that the films presented at Alekino are usually hardly available on Polish distribution networks like multiplexes, television channels, or internet platforms. Uh, so most of the children have only the chance to see them at the film festivals, including Alekino. Uh, I would like to say that we are 100% uh, booth referring with that to what Daniel said, because we also believe in all of these qualities that Daniel mentioned. So yeah, we are 100% booth. That maybe means also we are 100% Alekino. Uh, what means that thousands of young festival goers are facing a very new cultural experience and they have the opportunity to develop their, their personalities, their skills by watching the films. Uh, one of the important uh, projects at Alekino is the very first experience in the cinema. Here we have the screenings for children who are two years old and slightly older uh, in specially decorated rooms. So what you can see, this is not the typical cinema. The kids sit on the cushions. Uh, we have the animator that conducts all the screening. Short films are accompanied by dance or singing, sometimes together with the very small children. It's never completely dark in this cinema and the parents are very close to the kids. So even if you are a little bit afraid of the strange characters on the screen, it's easy just to have a hug with the parent and you have the feeling of staying safe. This is a very important project of ours because this is the very first step to the cinema. And when we are talking about the education for the cinema, it's, it's important that this first experience is very friendly. It's not any kind of violent experience. So this is why we do this project. The festival, as majority of the film festivals, is full of dialogue. And this dialogue, this discussions, has very educative function, I believe, because you can ask uh, uh, for what you don't know from the movie. You can have more about how the film is produced. 
And you, what's very important for us, can also give your own comments, uh, sometimes standing in front of a really large audience. So this is very important educational experience for the young spectators. Uh, as I said, uh, there are two levels, in my opinion, of the education at every film festival. This is education through the film and education for the film. Education through the film, you use all the educative opportunities which film brings, like presenting the, the, the different cultures, presenting the wild, rare animals, and so on and so on. This is only the simple example. And uh, education for the film is just preparing the kids to be, uh, the, to be the good cinema goers, to understand cinema better. So this is very important also. Uh, when we are talking about this education through the film, I think it's nice to show the, the opportunity of aesthetic education that usually goes through the animated films and social education. This is like bringing the kids the information about their own colleagues, their own mates, the, the kids of the same age living in a variety of cultures. It could be far away from your country, but I also strongly believe that it could be next street that you never went before. So this is a very important part of the education for, through the film. The next project, this is to make film with the star. The stars are the film directors who are coming for the festival and they have the opportunity to work for one day with the groups of kids, teenagers, younger teenagers, preparing the short films. This is really the kind of big adventure for them. If they like it, they can attempt to the next level of this adventure. This is the great film adventure, all year filmmaking workshops provided by the festival. Uh, at, at the festival, we have the final screening of the films made by the whole year. And this is really for these young filmmakers, very prestigious and important event. Uh, we also educate the adults. So Alekino Industry Education Pro, this is the platform of the idea and knowledge exchange for educators and the filmmakers. Usually we have two groups. One is of teachers, second is of filmmakers. They have their own sessions, but they are also the common sessions. I would like to cordially invite you this year. We decided to put this platform on the internet. So it's available, especially this uh, industry pro platform for guests from abroad. Uh, it's easy to, to attend it by registering yourself on our website. We have also the education uh, for uh, teenagers uh, by their own activities at the festival. Here you have the young reporters who are doing this, their critics. Uh, nowadays it's not that difficult. Before we had, uh, we've been even printing every day newspaper. Now it's easier because we can do it on the internet. And you have, of course, the long line of the volunteers. This is the education through the participation of the organization of the festival. This is not only the education, how to organize the festival, but it's something more, how to work in the group, how to work collective, how to solve the problems that can uh, occur uh, at this, well, for them, untypical event as the fest film festival. Uh, this is also one, one important project that's not on my, on my presentation, but I would like to refer to it. This is our platform that's called uh, Alekino at the Classroom. This is the platform with the short films and uh, uh, educational materials for the teachers. This platform is available for whole year. Uh, last year and also this year, we decided to open it broader also for the parents because we had many, it was a, a long time when the schools were closed, so we wanted the parents to benefit from this program. And well, I believe this is this, this is all I would like. I'm a little bit jealous for my colleagues who have been referring to the festivals they just finished like like uh, Sineki because our festival would will start within 10 days. And we, we really don't know what start it will be. We are preparing the festival as a hybrid, uh, as a hybrid. So we, we are first week in the screen, second in the theater, second week uh, online. But the situ epidemical situation in Poland is every day worse. So last year, 
through two, almost through two weeks before the festival, all the cinemas were closed and we moved fully to the internet. We are prepared for this, but it will be very sad. So please cross your fingers. Thank you very much. We will definitely cross our fingers also for you. Jerzy, thanks a lot. Double thanks for being here 10 days before the debut of your festival. And we can imagine it's uh, such a complicated moment. And thanks a lot for being with us. Also because your speech was very, very rich of ideas and proposals, starting from the discussion between uh, aesthetic education and social education and distinction between educating through films and for films also for putting an accent on lifelong film education which is something we don't think about usually but i think it's uh, something stra strategic which we can build, build together and also for the accent of your presentation on children because i find very innovative very interesting your approach to film education dedicated to youngest audiences so uh, thanks a lot for all the ideas i don't want to steal too much time because we are right on time and thanks for being so precise to all the speakers I recommend to the remaining speakers to be uh, as precise as the other people. And I leave the word to uh, Yaroslava Nstova, sorry for pronunciation. <laughs> Italian plus English plus Czech is not very easy to manage. Uh, from Zlin Festival, which is one of the uh, most ancient film festivals in Europe for children. So Yaroslava, the floor is yours. Buongiorno. <laughs> uh, ahoy in Czech. Uh, my name is Jaroslava Hinčtová and uh, for 17 years I've been working for Zlín Film Festival, International Film Festival for Children and Youth. As you can see, we are going to hold the 62nd edition in May, if COVID allows, hopefully. Um, our festival is uh, old in age, but... Uh, uh, very young in its focus, and we try to stay playful, as you can see in the posters. Uh, the festival is very closely connected to its town, not only in its name, so please let me tell you more about the, the town. Zlín is a modern industrial uh, in the, uh, university town with 74,000 people. 300 kilometers, 300 kilometers from uh, Prague, 50 from Slovakia, and uh, 200 from Vienna. Uh, Zlín is famous for being a center of Batya shoes uh, empire. Maybe you know uh, this uh, brand uh, also in Switzerland. Uh, this uh, family, Batya family's uh, concept was very progressive, very modern, and. Uh, it gave uh, uh, Zlín its uh, contemporary face and uh, its glory. Uh, in, order to, in order to increase uh, the sale rates of shoes and other product, uh, production, they started their film department and later on they uh, built their own film studios up the hill. And uh, many great filmmakers started their careers there, and then production continued with animations, live action, documentary, and uh, very special uh, films, educational films. Uh, during the war, uh, the organizers uh, decided to um, have uh, film, uh, the um, showcase of uh, uh, Czechoslovakian uh, film production called Film Harvests. Uh, lots of uh, great Czech, uh, at that time, Czech stars uh, came to Zlín. And at the same time, it was kind of uh, resistant against the German occupation, but unfortunately, uh, German authorities allowed uh, to have only two editions for uh, 1940 and 1941. But still, it was enough, uh, it was enough to uh, inspire other enthusiasts about festivals in Czechoslovakia, so the festival tradition started actually in Zlín. Uh, the first uh, edition of uh, our festival took place in February in 1961, and the first international edition was four years later. Uh, talking, uh, this year we celebrate uh, 85 years uh, since the film studio uh, was built and uh, during the history it uh, became a center of film uh, production for children and young people. 
uh, it's a paradox that uh, during the communism in the 70s and in, in, in the 80s, uh -huh, uh, there were lots of money going from state to make children's films. Uh, unlike, uh, unlike after the Velvet Revolution, by the way, we celebrate the fall of communism today, <laughs> so UPA. Um, so, uh, talking about uh, Zlín and Zlín Film Studios, uh, I wanted to give you a picture uh, how tight connection our festival and the city have. As I ha have said earlier, uh, we are going to hold uh, sec uh, 62nd edition, and these numbers uh, are from this year. Uh, from September, we had to postpone from May uh, to September dates, and also our 60th edition, 2020, happened in, uh, in the COVID age, but uh, still we were lucky enough to have it physically, unlike other festivals. Um, I think the reasons to organize I think the reasons to organize uh, children's film festivals are the same as uh, with any other uh, it, our befriended festivals, including Castellinaria. I like to use uh, five uh, words I borrowed from the British Film Institute. Uh, let's bring children curiosity, empathy, tolerance, aspiration, and enjoyment. Uh, here you can see... Uh, the, uh, in which sections we are trying to achieve our goals. Uh, this year, uh, for example, we split the youth section into two parts, into junior and uh, youth, because we found out that uh, films for 12 plus and 15 plus, it's, uh, they are quite different. Uh, so we uh, did this. And every year, for example, we have uh, a limited edition uh, with a big theme, uh, Three years ago, we had uh, Discover and Explore, uh, showing films about nature, traveling, uh, indigenous people. Later, uh, a year later, we had uh, Back to the Future with films about science, technology, uh, special effects. And uh, the latest theme this year was Literature in Film, where we showed uh, around 40 films based upon uh, famous or less known books. Mm -hmm. uh, our festival has a really, really big supporting problem. Our, uh, problem, sorry, program. Uh, our advantage is uh, the May dates uh, that uh, we can uh, have uh, these programs outdoors. Uh, sorry. As you can see, we have also film workshops. Uh, it deals with film education already. And uh, theater, we have everything. We, hold, we even have uh, some sports activities. Uh, we have half marathon. So if you come to our festival, you can run, run for victory. Uh, yeah. Um, last five years, we are we have been trying to build up a good uh, industry program for film professionals called Lean Industry Days. Uh, as you can see, one of the program is, uh, deals with film literacy. I will talk about that later. So let's go to um, the point why we are here. Uh, I like to call uh, our festival One Big School. Uh, we actually raise uh, audience for the general, for, uh, for the general festivals. And uh, in Zlín, there is a big tradition, very long tradition, uh, that most people living in the Zlín region, once in their lifetime, visited Zlín Film Festival screening. So there is a very strong uh, connection between local people and, uh, and the festival. Uh, schools, groups are our main consumers, are our main audience, so we try to cover um, all the levels of educational systems from a uh, system from kindergarten to university. Uh, I think as uh, all other festivals, we face a bit problem, be, uh, a bit of a problem with secondary schools, but hopefully uh, it will get better with, uh, with our future concept. Uh, a month uh, before the festival, we, um, we meet the school's representatives 
uh, and uh, we are from this lean region, and we introduce them our offer according to age, uh, geographic, uh, topic, and other criteria. And later on, of course, we are uh, able, willing to discuss it uh, individually. So the offer is made, and now the kids come to the cinema. Each film at our festival has an uh, has a introduction because we want to distinguish uh, regular screening in the cinema from the festival screening. And uh, for school screenings and for some uh, more films, we use the concept of young moderators. So they can, both parties can relate to each other, they can get uh, a connection. And from them, they are given uh, a basic uh, info about the film. So film is, film is seen and uh, now uh, the kids are full of impressions, are full of questions and so they have the unique opportunity to talk to, to filmmakers and in best scenario their horizons are broadened, uh, they want to see more films, they want to talk about films with their schoolmates, with teachers, with parents. They pick up a film as their profession so this is, the, this is the best case, and this is what we want to achieve, right? Uh, so this is, this is what festival school looks like. Um, a long-term problem, as I said before, uh, is to attract teenagers to the cinema in their leisure time. So we came up with an idea to design a Zlin teen zone. Uh, with uh, screening uh, of teenage films, with uh, concerts, discussions on burning teenage topics, uh, and everything from uh, the chair uh, via um, their ambassador to entertainment, we want to uh, be designed in their style. Before that, uh, of course, we want to make, uh, to do some research and ask them what they really desire. Um, the carefully chosen set of uh, teenage films uh, that were screened during last five or six uh, festivals uh, will be offered also to schools uh, uh, with didactic materials, of course, and hopefully it will work and we can start uh, film education among teenagers. So, and uh, the COVID times uh, made us come up with uh, an, our own platform, uh, online platform, and we want to continue using it. It, it would be silly if we won't do that. Uh, this, uh, the, the idea is to have each quarter uh, a new showcase of films for children and youth, and uh, the overarching topic would be kind of uh, courage uh, and uh, with variations topic and didactic materials will be made for both parents and teachers. We want to start it uh, on the 1st uh, of January 2022. Uh, so this is briefly the festival type of not only film education and uh, if you ask me about the situation in the Czech Republic, the situation is not very good about film education, but there is uh, still hope in the form of uh, the Association for Film and Audiovisual Education, which organizes every Zlín Film Festival and industry program. Uh, it's, it's called Cinema Behind the School. And this year, uh, was, uh, the topic was uh, the teacher in the lead role, uh, and it reflected the ex experience of teachers from all around Europe. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this association uh, is a nationwide platform for all the teachers, lecturers, uh, everybody who dreams uh, the film education would be like part of curriculum. And uh, the main problem is uh, lack of uh, teachers of film education, lack of methodology, and lack of, di uh, lack of didactic, didactic materials and textbooks. But uh, there is still hope in small groups of enthusiasts like us uh, to, uh, to have this film education uh, part of the uh, curriculum. So uh, thank you very much. It was very brief. Thank you very much for attention. And I'm very, back to, uh, I'm very happy to be back, actually. It's from 2013, the photo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jaroslava. Very, very interesting, very rich, especially for putting on the table some 
very crucial topics like, for example, the relationship between education and consumption, which I think is a quite a big topic, and also the uh, idea to recreate a sort of space of reflection. I can imagine a festival as a space of reflection nowadays, more than just a showcase of films, uh, something at a higher level from an educational and uh, social, cultural point of view. But I give the word to Arba Atashi from uh, uh, Kosovo. The Anibar Festival, a very nice, very young festival on animation. And Arba, I give you the microphone also. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I'm Arva, uh, the festival director of the Anibar International Animation Festival, which is uh, located in the city of Peja in Kosovo. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, um, tell you more about the city also, uh, which uh, uh, you can see is uh, roughly around uh, uh, 96,000 inhabitants. And um, uh, I want to tell you about more about the beginning of uh, and the foundation of the festival. As the festival first started uh, by a group of 18 years old that wanted to bring uh, the medium of animation uh, in the city and uh, represent the medium of animation, but also likewise provide the cinema and uh, uh, provide film to uh, uh, the local youth uh, that is, is located in the city of Peja, but in Kosovo in general also. Uh, Kosovo in general, it is considered one of the youngest country in Europe with this average age of 25 years old. So you can only imagine how many of these inhabitants are uh, young audiences that uh, were much in need of a festival, but also uh, of cinema in general. Uh, the Anibar organization uh, is committed in breaking the civic ap apathy through cultural uh, activism. And we have uh, many programs uh, which uh, uh, include uh, uh, work in culture in general, uh, but also technology and new technology. We have uh, focuses on um, animation production that we have. Uh, we have a program for Culture for Change, which include the festival, but also managing the only cinema in the city of Peja, which is uh, Cinema Yusuf Garvala. But also arts in education and education through arts, which is one of the most important topics that we also invest uh, um, our time yearly, but also through the festival. Uh, the Anibar organization, uh, like a snapshot of throughout the years, it started in 2010, and it was uh, only uh, only the festival happened uh, during that time. So uh, throughout the years, we saw the importance of turning ourselves from an uh, organization that only organizes the festival into a functioning all year round uh, organization that provides for the community. So uh, in 2004, we started managing the only cinema in the city of Peja, which I mentioned, Yusuf Garvala, and worked throughout it uh, uh, to have a lease with the municipality on managing for the next 15 years. Uh, this created uh, uh, the means necessary for us uh, to transform um, uh, our two main goals that the, organ the, the, that the festival was organized, which uh, were um, um, to also educate uh, the audiences through the films of the, fe uh, the festival, Festival, but also provide uh, uh, educational uh, activities in the festival itself uh, into a yearly program which turned out to be arts in education and education through arts. Uh, the festival itself, it had the, its uh, 12 editions, so we are rel relatively very new compared to the other festivals here, uh, but uh, big an impact for uh, a very small country, which is uh, Kosovo. So uh, we had our 12th edition of the festival this summer, uh, which was uh, spread out in five cinemas. Uh, three of them are improvised and built only for the festival in outdoor spaces, and uh, two of them indoor. Uh, we, in total, do around like 75 uh, activities Activities throughout seven days of the festival. And uh, uh, these activities include also workshops, professional masterclasses. Uh, more than 300 films are screened throughout uh, these cinemas. Uh, we also uh, try to engage more uh, also the audiences through doing other activities such as like music concerts, public performances, and panels such as this uh, where important topics are, uh, are discussed. Uh, the festival itself engages a lot of youth, but also a lot of, wo uh, a lot of people that uh, organize the festival, which in total, like it's more than 100 people that work for the festival uh, during its summer. Uh, one of the things that we noticed during the festival is that uh, as we gather a lot of uh, people, uh, like 100 people working for the festival, but also a lot of audiences, we saw the importance uh, that the festival should serve also in more 
uh, than only to screen the latest animations and also the latest productions of it. So we started organizing the festival around one specific theme that had uh, um, a specific social, political, or, cult or cultural issue. And through it, we wanted to discuss it together with other audiences, but also together with other people engaged. So we can see here uh, throughout 2010 until 2011, we treated a lot of subjects, uh, such as gender equality, also uh, the relation to the human, uh, which will happen last year in the online edition, isolation, climate change, and different topics that uh, are uh, very important and need to be discussed also with the young audiences and uh, help them get educated towards that. So here are some non-playable videos, but like throughout the, each of the edition of the festival, we also uh, do one trailer, one specific trailer uh, that promotes uh, these kind of topics to the young audiences further through the visual and audiovisual materials. So here are. Uh, this is like the cinema Yusuf Garvala, which I mentioned, uh, and the, our program Education Through Arts and Education uh, um, in Arts uh, expanded here. Um, in, in the former Education in Arms, we have uh, founded two animation academies uh, located in Peya and in Pristina, which are six landmark programs uh, that aim for the education of the young generations on how to create animation, short animations. Uh, this is very important for us, uh, specifically as in Kosovo, there is no institution that provides education in the field of animation, so it's like the only place where they can learn how to create animation and create the new uh, professionals uh, um, of uh, the industry of animation, but as well as uh, um, education through arts or through animation specifically. We have two specific programs that we implement throughout the year. One is uh, we go to the schools uh, of uh, the city of Peya and region and screen animations. Uh, that have one specific uh, uh, topic and do discussions with the students. Uh, this is uh, implemented from first graders until high schoolers, so uh, it falls under like six until 18 years old that we work with children and kids, uh, but also teenagers. Uh, but also we bring them inside of the cinema where they get to experience the cinema, they uh, get to experience film uh, seeing in a big screen but also, uh, as the same, use the film uh, for uh, education on one specific topic and do discussions uh, uh, with them. Um, some more videos. <laughs> the Anibar Animation Academy, uh, as I mentioned, is the only uh, program that... Uh, Sorry, it's the only program uh, that provides uh, uh, that provides uh, the um, means necessary for uh, the young uh, the young generations. Uh, learning how to do animation, but also learn how to use that animation for further purposes. So the, pro, uh, the productions that are done inside of the Anibar Animation Academy are now being uh, screened and implemented into the school program that we do when going to school. So like the older generations are providing uh, the materials necessary for uh, the, uh, this program but also uh, they are learning how to create uh, the animations and how to use like the new technologies such as augmented reality, virtual reality, but also 360 uh, videos uh, and photos uh, to be integrated uh, into um, their uh, everyday uh, life, but also in uh, other materials. Um, one of the main uh, reasons uh, of the program in arts and education and education through arts is that um, together with uh, other organizations that work in Kosovo and, and that deal with film specifically, um, and uh, we, wanted to, we want to advocate towards uh, the uh, integration of film and animation specifically in the curriculum of uh, uh, schools and uh, um, aim for uh, the use of uh, many, uh, as much as audiovisual materials uh, when it comes to uh, teaching, but also uh, when it comes to the usage of uh, explaining and discussing specific uh, topics in this. Um, as many of us uh, have experienced like also the COVID-19 situation and like last year uh, when it comes to the festival, but also the work that we do with animation academies, both of them have, have converted online last year and hybrid uh, in this format, which uh, in our case has helped us reach a lot more, uh, not only in the city of Peya and region, but also go to the rural areas and have access to also uh, that kind of audience and uh, provide the, the, uh, the education activities uh, that we have also to uh, those audiences. Um, 
engagements beyond animation and film that we do. We try a lot also to uh, focus and spread also the medium of animation uh, as we are very keen uh, believers, fun believers that uh, animation is one of the best mediums uh, to be used at, at young ages also. Uh, for education, we try a lot to work with other organizations uh, that are in the city of Pea through the network of cultural organizations and uh, provide uh, uh, all the materials that we have as a festival uh, to them to use the film and to use uh, the medium of animation. We're also working uh, on topics such as human rights and the implementation of them uh, in schools uh, through the usage of film. Uh, engage as much as uh, the young audiences uh, in animation production and teach them the basics of how they can create their own animation. And uh, outreach projects which are more focused also on the rural areas but also the region uh, uh, of uh, Pea but also in, of Kosovo in general. So if you want to know more about uh, what we do as a festival and as an organization, uh, we have some of the links here uh, that you can uh, find. And uh, also, uh, this is it. So thank you very much. And I am sure that we will discuss more in details also on the next, uh, um, next half of the panel. Thank you. Thanks, Arba, <clears throat> especially for being so quick. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, well. Thank you very much. Uh, now it's the hardest part for me because I have to moderate myself. <laughs> because I, I also would like to say a few words about our festival. Because in Cineteca Milano we also run a festival which is Piccolo Grande Cinema Festival which runs since 2004. And uh, I just want to say very few words if Christiana, if I have time. I don't know if, uh, uh, if we have time to. Uh, In the meantime, I just uh, I just want to un underline some aspects of the of uh, Arba's uh, speech because one of the key aspects I think that has arisen also from uh, the other speech of all the people that are, that is here is the cooperation on the territory, which is very important. A festival uh, has an impact on its territory, and it's important to understand how imp how to improve it, how to keep it strong. And all the festivals that I've seen, also small festivals, which are not the ones that are sitting at the table, works, uh, work as, as good as they can, uh, as they have relationship with the territory. Christiana. Um, may I suggest perhaps uh, to have the break and we can have your presentation after the break so you're not stressed by the time. Uh, we have plenty of time after the break to see uh, the Cineteca presentation and to open the discussion. Perfect. Okay. okay, so see you at uh, 3.15, quarter past three. Ci vediamo alle tre e un quarto. On se rencontre à trois quinze minutes. <laughs> in, I cannot say in German, sorry. See you then.
Uh, okay, can we start again? Okay, uh, thanks for staying with us. Uh, now, after uh, such a wide amount of suggestions and inspiring statements, it would be a pleasure for me and also uh, <laughs> the hardest part of this day for me to put everything together, trying to uh, face some key issues about uh, the relationship between cultural mediations, festivals, film education, uh, towards uh, art house films and quality products. Uh, on the background of the complicated moment we are running through, and so uh, we will try to get across all the topics of the discussion. Uh, perhaps you already uh, had a chance to take a look at the program of the conference, and you have seen that there are around four main points that we would like to focus on into this discussion uh, about uh, the relationship between festivals and schools, uh, the role of the festivals towards the promotion of film education, and film literacy, teacher training, and how teachers can promote film education in schools on the background of the, of the complicated situation of the pandemic we are facing that has uh, fostered not only critical situations, of course, the, the overall uh, context is a sort of global tragedy, but uh, uh, from some points of view, it has offered also some new resources and some uh, food for thoughts to renovate the structure of the cultural proposal of uh, each festival we are running in. I would like to make a very brief presentation as uh, we have announced at the very end of the first part of the conference about uh, Piccolo Grande Cinema. Piccolo Grande Cinema Cineteca Milano Festival is uh, the festival we run in Cineteca since 2008. Um, so, uh, where the, oh, okay, here it is. I would like to very briefly uh, introduce the, thanks. To very briefly introduce the the festival's activities. Sorry, can you? Thanks. Um, I don't want to give a, a, a full overview of the of the festival, and I don't want to say too much things because I think we have said too many things about festivals, and some of the things that I would say are more or less the same that you have already heard. I just would like to focus on uh, one uh, aspect, one especially one project that we have run. Uh, okay. Let's try again with the microphone. Uh, on a special project that we have run this year for the first time, because after those year and a half in which there was a very complicated relationship with the uh, young audiences, we, we, our theaters, we, Cineteca manages three film theaters, our theaters have been closed for more than one year, and uh, it's getting more and more complicated to get in touch with schools and with young audiences. We have had online activities, but we felt the need to hear at the young people in the country and try to understand from them what are the priorities for relaunching and for the rebirth of cinema uh, for the future. So we have organized a special project whose name is Cinema Sara. Uh, is a year-long activity that we that we have started in winter in February of uh, this year. Uh, we have organized some online sessions with uh, 45 classes uh, in four regions in Italy, from Lombardia, Piemonte, Lazio, and Sic Sicily. Sicilia. Uh, we have made these online meetings with those classes and teachers. We have agreed with them to discuss on five main topics. Uh, which were uh, the space of cinema, so the relationship uh, of uh, uh, young audience with the, the cinema as a place and how it will be developed in the future, the relationship of uh, uh, film and uh, um, education and uh, young audiences with the new territories, for example, with new technologies and digital te technologies and immersive technologies and how they can support uh, the future of cinema. Uh, one table was about uh, uh, um, jobs and uh, uh, cinema in school, so what the students expect to have in their educational ordinary activities about cinema. So we had five different tables of, on these topics. One table was about the stories, which stories the young uh, citizens in Italy 
want to hear, want to uh, watch at the cinema. Um, then all these 90 students, there were two delegates from each class that was involved. They all gathered in Milan during our festival in the 4th and 5th of November. Our festival has just finished about 10 days ago. ago. And this is the reason why uh, my colleague Silvia uh, is not here, because she's ill now, because she was too <laughs> tired after the festival. After each edition of the festival, I will, all of us get ill in bed for one week. I hope it will not happen to my colleagues here and to Christiana also, because life has to go on. However, uh, she's ill at the bed at this moment, and I want to say hello by my colleague Silvia uh, to all of us, and also on behalf of Matteo Pavesi, who is the general director of uh, Cineteca di Milano. Uh, anyway, we gathered together in those five tables in a couple of days in uh, Cinema Oberdan in Milan, uh, that now has changed the name and is uh, Meet. Uh, the name of the venue is uh, Spazio Meet. Uh, we had discussions for two days, and then on Saturday the 6th, the decalogue of this a sort of manifesto of uh, proposals for the future of cinema has been submitted to um, Alberto Barbera, who is the director of uh, Venice Film Festival. And uh, he was there uh, in uh, Spazio Meet uh, about 10 days ago, and she, he received our manifesto. And now we'll see how this advocacy initiative will, uh, will flow in the future. Uh, I don't want to tell any more about the, our festival because, yeah, it's uh, it's a festival that uh, also has to do with uh, ICT. We have developed some programs about um, gaming, video games, uh, about cinema. We also have created video games about a video game about Luca Comerio, which, who is a pioneer, an Italian pioneer in cinema, who has been working during the First World War, and we created a video game about uh, Luca Comerio's cinema that deals also with archive and heritage, because we are a cinematech and we, our main mission is about the promotion of film heritage and archive films. Uh, but the rest of the things is more, are more or less uh, are very similar to what they do. Also, our festival is a very young festival. It runs only uh, since 2008. So I really don't want to add anything more to that. And I want to uh, start the discussion with you because I took notes of some points. And one common point of the discussion I would like to start from is, uh, is, is related to a general issue that has to do with our ordinary activity because uh, we are, uh, apart from the pandemic, apart from the COVID situation we are uh, in two since one year and a half, uh, also, before this, we, we have uh, uh, a very complex situation and very complex and open question about the relationship with the younger audiences with film as a medium. Because we all live in a completely changing and uh, quickly changing technological and uh, communicative uh, ecosystem and environment. Uh, they, um, the way young people enjoy audiovisual content uh, is changing every day, is a very complicated uh, thing to understand and to uh, uh, describe and to watch, okay? So it's not easy to uh, understand what happens between younger audiences and the audiovisual media, but media in general. So this is a, more a matter of media literacy than film literacy, but I think in the case of uh, cinema and the festival activities, they are very connected points because uh, the way uh, young audiences deal with audiovisual content also influence the way young audiences watch films. Films are uh, objects that have a duration which is quite long. You cannot change it, you cannot stop it if you watch it in a film theater, in a theater. So uh, it's something that is getting far and far from the way uh, now we are accustomed to interact with audiovisual, especially thinking that uh, the majority of the consumption in the last uh, year and a half has been done from home, domestic, uh, uh, domestic enjoyment of audiovisual content that has completely changed, that's accelerating some changes in the perception of younger people, uh, I think not only in, uh, in all the countries, that I think it's a worldwide 
phenomenon. So my first question is, uh, uh, I want to, I would like to ask, maybe we can start from uh, Yerzi, if you are listening to us, because I know uh, you have to uh, quit the meeting uh, um, a little before the scheduled uh, end of, the, of our conference. So I, maybe we can start from you. Uh, Jerzy, if you are online, can you give us a sign? Okay, he will join the discussion. We can start from our speakers here. Uh, oh, Jerzy, here you are. Yeah, I am. I'm still present. Can you hear me, please? Yes, very well. Thanks a lot. I would like to start from you uh, because I know that you, you have to leave soon, so I, I, we, ha we still have some time before you leave, uh, but uh, maybe we can start from you uh, for this reason. So my first issue is uh, to, I think we can start reflecting upon this topic. Uh, according to your opinion, how the consumption model of audiovisual content uh, among younger uh, audiences, citizens, people has undergone relevant changes, and how uh, you uh, you how, and how do you think festivals can face this challenge, and uh, uh, and try to um, engage younger audiences in uh, enjoying audiovisual content um, in this complex and heterogeneous. Um, um, uh, media ecosystem. Thank you very much for this question. Well, uh, I do believe, I'm, I'm in general, I'm optimistic from the point of view of the director of the festival. Uh, I hardly remember the time when the television started, but they said then that the television will kill the cinema. That didn't happen. Then they told us that maybe uh, vid video cassettes will kill the cinema. I believe it, it would not happen also with the internet. However, definitely these habits of watching the video products, especially among the young people, are, fast, are changing very fast. And I think we as the, in a way, uh, exhibitors of traditional uh, films, I mean, in terms of film, which you define that this is the the object which is uh, which has its own duration. It's not interactive in general. You have just to sit down and watch. Uh, so we we exhibit in general such films, and also we exhibit them in quite a traditional way. I mean, in the theaters, not via internet. However, now uh, in the times of COVID, partly we had to move to the internet. And still, for me, the picture, the film, is the most important factor. So I believe that the, the screens and the cine theater will be continued. Now I know that some of, the, some of the specialists are telling us that maybe the cinemas have to uh, uh, invent something more than only screening. It is invented in the multiplexes with the popcorn, I believe. Uh, as far as I know, popcorn, the... the Income from popcorn is higher than the income from tickets. That's meaningful, I believe. But still, maybe you need more. It, it should be a kind of festivity where going with your family to the theater. But we do it at the festivals. Actually, the festival is not just the screening. It's more, uh, our colleague from Zlin told us that every screening is especially uh, uh, has a special beginning with the person who invites the audience. It's unusual situation. There are more of such the unusual situations. Of course, the opportunity to meet the, the filmmakers is totally unusual. So we, we should, I believe, put the accent at the festivals of, on what's unusual. And of course, we, we have to keep the highest quality of the films presented. And in this regards, Okay, we, we have to know what are the changes, what's changing in these habits, but I believe young people can easily combine all of these opportunities. So playing the video games, watching the films at, on Netflix, let's say, and coming to the festival, because each of the, this opportunity brings some different values. Of course, in my opinion, watching the movie at the festival and the cinema is the most valuable way, but 
one, but I'm, well, the older guy or the young kids, it could be different, but still we had, well, at least we had them. I don't know how it would work this, this year, but this year is very special with the pandemic uh, everywhere. So anyway, I'm not afraid, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think we, we have to struggle for our audiences. We had to know how do they, uh, uh, how do they, how, what kind of habits of watching they prefer, but we, we have to go on our way. I, I, I don't think I will change the festival and the festival of video games or Facebook uh, interactive talks. No, this is the film festival. So that's it, thank you. Uh, well, thanks, Jerzy, because uh, <clears throat> uh, I think you're right. I, I don't know if uh, all the rest of the speakers at the table are so optimistic or what they want to say about this, but I like the expression to struggle for the audience because it's oh, it can sound like a conquer <laughs> or it can just sound like a mission. So I think it is a this is a good image that we can keep from this conference to struggle for the audience. I would like to ask yeah, the rest of the speakers, but I don't want to ask anyone in particular uh, about the same question. And if you are as optimistic as uh, Jerzy, or if you are not, or in which way, uh, I don't know who wants to take the word. Oh, I say so. Okay. Because, uh, hello, can any, everybody yeah. hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, because I agree with what you say, and I remember uh, uh, at our festival a few, e few weeks ago, uh, during one of the school screenings, uh, after the screening, uh, uh, the moderator asked them, uh, asked the children, did you like it? And then there was one boy who raised their hand. He said, I liked it a lot, and then why did you like it? It was the first time in my life that I went to a cinema, and this boy was around like 13 years old. Um, so that's why I think it's so important for us as festivals to keep organizing this situation and to have this impact on a child, which is a really different impact, impact than when you see a, a film from home or from the classroom. And what, what he also said, like um, to meet the, the artists around the film, so the Foley artists, the directors, uh, the impact is totally different. So I really see that as an important role we have as, as festivals to, to let them experience that. Uh, part around, around the film and not only the film itself. And, and therefore the place is also really important, I think, so the cinemas in general. I, would, uh, I totally agree with what both of them said uh, in regards to our uh, responsibilities as a festival to also represent the cinema and grow the new uh, generations of cinema lovers that would uh, appreciate seeing the films in a big screen. But uh, what we uh, has, have found it very useful is uh, uh, not only to introduce them to the cinema and also to uh, the big screen and all of the emotions that are transmitted through seeing a film in comparison to an electronic device, is also the availability that uh, the festivals provide on follow-up activities from that screening. So uh, we saw examples of each of, of the festivals doing discussions also with the students. So you don't get uh, the, the students and also the children don't have that opportunity if they see the same film um, in Netflix or in any electronic device. They don't get to uh, meet the filmmaker and ask specific questions that there or like uh, keen points that they uh, notice during the film. So I think, uh, um, each of these screenings and each of these uh, initiatives uh, in uh, creating this new cinema lover uh, generations is also uh, our responsibility also to provide them something beyond also the screening. So uh, I think this is also a new way uh, that uh, we can uh, uh, engage more also uh, young audiences. Um, yes, I think uh, cinema culture is uh, something that we all uh, think is very important and as a festival programmer I, I like to see, uh, I mean putting together a program it's like taking the best ingredients uh, for, uh, uh, you can compare it maybe to making, uh, being a chef and making the perfect uh, dish that you find the best olive oil from Greece and the best uh, mozzarella from Italy and and then you just don't you, you don't uh, just put them on a on, on a table uh, for for everyone to get it you will also like 
put them together in the best possible way. And we have this <laughs> special places called uh, movie theaters where, where we, I mean, it's the best, the best film experience you can get, uh, you can get there. Um, so uh, I think that is important, but it's also important to uh, stay relevant uh, for the young audience in all different ways. So uh, um, I think uh, it's it's not the only, we cannot be conservative and only think that we are going to present films in a movie theater like uh, we have been doing for many, many years. We also have to think about how we can reach this new audience that have the moving images around them everywhere, also in their pockets from when they are maybe eight years old. Uh, uh, we've been uh, bringing kids uh, to the cinema for second uh, for 61 years. So, and I think if we fail, we can uh, easily die. That uh, there is no reason to hold a festival like this. So this is a very traditional way, I know. But uh, I just want to tell you that when I select films, I usually see them. I watch them on my laptop. And then the, the short list of films we watch on the big screen. And it's a totally different experience. And this is what we want to offer kids, not just see it uh, on their uh, TV screens, but in the cinema with a whole range of new emotions from a great quality of music uh, with the big screen. So I think this is very, very important. Yeah, I think a key word in what you said is experience, okay? Because we, we are dealing with... Uh, Okay, we, we maybe we're accustomed. Well, I'm 40 years old, so I, I'm still accustomed from something that maybe has, is a little old-fashioned. But experience of cinema for me is the experience of cinema itself. You sit down and it gets dark and something starts. Then you stay sitting for two hours and then you get out and think about the film. Okay, that's basically our idea of. Uh, uh, experience, but maybe now this topic has a little changed. You were talking about uh, this model of experience, but I think now we we have to adapt. I I, I think I don't know if you also meant something about this, but uh, today experience we have to understand how we can create that kind of experience. It's not a matter of going to the cinema because now if we want to meet the um, habits of this youngest. Uh, generations and at not only youngest generations because we watch films on VOD platforms so it's a, a widespread problem uh, well problem it's a widespread uh, consideration to be done apart from the age so my question and I think it's not I, I, I hope it's not too complicated it's how to create an experience uh, maybe you, you you got an answer uh, you, you, you gave an answer by uh, building uh, like collateral activities, but I really would like you. Yeah, I really would like to. I, I really would like to to ask you to ask yourself, what in, what is a, a, an experience, an updated concept of experience of watching a films, a film, and how a festival can work to recreate it. I think from your presentation, an answer can arise, but I would like to point on this and ask you a reflection on that. Who wants to start? Maybe. Jerzy, you want to start? Uh, we cannot hear you. I'm mute, so you should hear me. Yes, perfectly. Thank you. OK, thank you. Well, I think partly I, I replied your question before, as I believe that the festivals, with all of their activities, with every detail of how we welcome the kids in the cinema, they, this is making the, the experience for them. And of course, there are various fields of this experience, I believe. So this is from just from what we've been talking about, uh, watching together, uh, having the opportunity to talk the filmmakers. I will underline again, this is talking together also. So this is not that you are just chat one to one, but this is talking together. 
Uh, just a second, I will take it off. Uh, yeah, this was my mobile. So uh, I believe that this experience could be created in many, many ways. And you have to find the proper way to to join your uh, to, to find the proper way to join your uh, your audi your auditorium. So this is what we are doing, and of course, uh, well, referring to what Daniel I believe said. Sorry, I cannot see you, so I'm not sure uh, if I uh, know who was speaking about this. But Daniel, you said I believe that uh, we shouldn't be conservative. Definitely yes, we shouldn't be conservative. We should follow the changes in the all behaviors of, of young people because the kids now are totally different from the kids, not of my, when I was the kid, but 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So we have to investigate this and we have to look for the proper way to give them the experience they can accept. But also we, we have to keep it in a way balanced because I believe we shouldn't be too easy only to give them what they want. Uh, we are also bringing them up. So when you think about bringing up, I believe you, you need someone who, who brings up and someone who is to be brought up. So in this regards, uh, this is kind of, uh, how to say, it, delicate balance we should keep between being, being progressive, but also being conservative. By the way, uh, just to, 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 to one remark to what we said before, I have got yesterday the numbers from the owner of the biggest network of Polish cinemas. And what they found out that after the lockdown of the cinemas, uh, uh, the number of the spectators in the first months of open cinemas was bigger than the, the same months before the epidemic. So it means that people want to go to the cinema. Of course, I don't have the numbers how many of the young or very young people were among them, but I believe the majority. Thank you. Yeah, it's very interesting because you're talking about how we can guess what the new relationship with the audiences with cinema is. For example, in Italy, uh, the situation of uh, the audience was quite uh, blocked before the pandemic. There was no significant growth. It was always the same number of audiences with a block of uh, spectators which are very addicted, very, very, very enthusiastic and always go to the cinema while lots of people don't go to the cinema. There was a calculation of a, of a report of some years ago that one up to two citizens in Italy go to the cinema. It means that one up to two citizens don't go to the cinema. So that's a meaningful question and maybe we can leave it for the rest of the debate. How you can guess a new model of uh, cinema going will be developed after the lockdown we had for a long, long time. But I want to give the word to the rest of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the parterre, because uh, Gerdi spoke about giving experience that people can accept. That is an interesting interpretation of what you're talking about. Someone wants, anyone wants to say something on that? Maybe Daniel. Uh, I think Jersey said everything I wanted to say, but um, uh, I was thinking about uh, that we have this quite unique uh, situation because we, we have a lot of uh, children and young people coming with their schools uh, to our festivals. And a lot of uh, them are coming for the first time, maybe to the cinema. So, uh, and this is something really good that they are they are forced by their teachers to go to see something, <laughs> okay. maybe very strange, very different from what they uh, normally see. But this is an opportunity that we should uh, try to uh, use uh, more, maybe. How can we, when, when we have them at the cinema, uh, what can we do to make them feel that this is a place I want to continue visiting in my free time with my parents, with my friends. Um, and I think it has a lot to do about uh, creating a friendly environment in, in all possible ways. Uh, good introductions, uh, a nice uh, 
atmosphere. Um, yeah, I think that that is something that we uh, can think about, and uh, it's important to develop uh, that uh, to uh, to keep them when we uh, when when we have them uh, forced mm -hmm. to 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 be in the cinema, maybe for the first time. Can I add? To yes, that? of course. I don't know, maybe uh, if, if it's okay for you, we can close the tour about this topic and then you can ask you questions or we can, yeah, let's close the, the, the tour. Maybe some other things arise and then we, you can make your question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what I also think is important in creating the experience for the, for the students is to see them not only as, as visitors of our festivals, but also as like participants of our festivals. So for example, the the project we do uh, throughout the Netherlands where they make their own films uh, in a run-up to the festival. Uh, and then when they come to the festival, they see this whole program which consists of the films they have made, which are short one minute films, but also animations from our Cinekit program, a documentary, they see the full uh, package of different charas. Um, and I think then they have the option to really feel like part of, of the festival and to feel like this is something we can also do and we can also be be part of and um, it doesn't feel like something too far away for them. So I think it's really important to to make them feel participants of, of the film world and not only uh, as visitors of, of film screenings. So this is what I want to add. Definitely a very important point. There is another question. If it's okay for you, we close the, the, this, uh, the um, this man before. Oh, Jared, you're leaving. Oh, sorry, just a quick break. Yeah. I would like to add something. Uh, uh, there are some concepts uh, of involving the children to curate the festival program. That seems for me very interesting. And at Alekino, we believe maybe next year we'll start. It was very difficult to do it during the pandemic. But the, the idea to make the audience not only the, the spectators, but also the active active uh, participants, including the kind of opportunity to collaborate with young people to create the festival program seems to me very interesting. And maybe this is one of the important projects for us for the future. Yeah, I have to to, to, to beg your pardon, but now I, I need to go. I'm really sorry it was urgent and, and I didn't expect that I will be in this situation, but I have to, to go to other place. So, Thank you very much and, and hope to see you as soon as possible. Thanks, Jersey. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, anyone was starting to speak? What Jerzy said, uh, I, I now realize that uh, it's true uh, that uh, these uh, young people, children, they helped to create the program because I've been working for, I've been selecting films for our festival for 17 years. And uh, every year I learned uh, to know our audience. I, I knew what they like, what they didn't like. So uh, when somebody said, oh, I saw a nice Indian movie, and I said, mm, I didn't select it because I know my audience. So unconsciously, they are part of uh, our program team, actually. So they are partners. <laughs> yeah, and maybe just to add, I think that it's, uh, I agree with everyone what they said. And I think this is like uh, one of the um, new format of the experience that they uh, that they participate starting from like the personal experience of uh, uh, going to the cinema and seeing a film inside of a big screen and everything but also um, what uh, Rian said uh, uh, also engaging them in a way that they are participatory in that process in an in interactive way where they can uh, give something also more than just be observers of uh, that scene that will uh, uh, cre is creating the new experience of the cinema and is making the audience more active audiences in participating in further screenings and further films, but also having one sense that they are also giving something to, uh, giving back something to that process. Yeah, I think this is a crucial point because from my experience, my point of view, I think, uh, 
um, Daniel was asking how uh, if uh, students, children, young audience that are forced to go to the cinema by the school rules, do they go back? Do they come back to the cinema? Do they come back and what kind of product they're going to look for? Are they looking, they go to the cinema? Perhaps. Do they watch the film we want them to watch? Does this reasoning work? I don't know it does, if it works, but I think the answer is right, uh, is in the air because um, co-programming and participatory programming seems to be something that can support fostering engagement. That is really one of the possible keys uh, for, for that. Uh, maybe we can ask, maybe we can listen to the questions from the audience and then maybe if you want you can reflect upon this again if you, if you have th something to say or we can uh, go to another topic. But in the meanwhile, we have a couple of questions, the men uh, here, and then there's a girl. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, interesting discussion. But my question, I'm, 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 I'm the CEO of the Palazzo del Cinema in Locarno, which is housing the Locarno Film Festival uh, organization, as well as three movie theaters, as well as Ticino Film Commission, and a film school, which is CISA, Conservatorio Internazionale Scienze Audiovisive. All in all, to tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very close to these topics of how to preserve uh, cinemas, because actually one of the main challenges of uh, a film festival today is to have the opportunity to have, still have, uh, theaters in order to show your movies because actually economically speaking we can see a, a, a real trend of concentration of forces of investments in huge spectacular venues but everything which has to do with a specific curation of content is going to be neglected by these huge groups so I think it's one of the challenges and the task of the festivals in the future to become a kind of, not only a preservation, but a kind of organization of platform uh, offering some enrichment in the content. So not just, as you were mentioning before, a movie and a, and a sitting place, but also having the possibility to engage in a discussion, uh, meeting some, somebody working on this movie, or trying to have more uh, experiences, visual experiences with a backstage projection and all these things. And everything I, I'm just mentioning, quite random, uh, is belonging to a fact that it's content you're never going to reach on your individual platform, which can be your smartphone or your uh, iPad or anything whatever. So all in all, I think it's one of the, of the, of the, of the future goals of any, any film festival is going to be kind of one side preservation of this collective experience of sharing emotions, sharing a vision of a film. And on the other hand, trying to enrich this experience and keeping this activity all along the year because Otherwise, you're, you're losing your theaters. And this is exactly what's happening with the film festival in Locarno. They are really concerned about some venues which are going to disappear because there is no more economic interest of keeping cinemas in a small town like Locarno, like the small towns you're, you're performing your own festivals. So I think, by the way, you mentioned something about uh, cinema, a theater which had to be recouped, and this is why my question. Thank you. I have to agree totally with what you said. Uh, in our case, specifically in the city of Pea, in 2017, there was a campaign again, uh, uh, about the privatization of the only cinema in the city of Pea. And uh, we, as Anibar, managed to gather 10,000 signatures petition and did a campaign of six months to preserve the cinema and its independency and its artistic vision when it comes to the screenings that we have inside of the cinema. So I think, especially for the small cities, but also for the big cities, like uh, it is crucial to also preserve this kind of uh, um, cinema and this kind of uh, uh, fostering of these kind of films and these kind of interactive ways uh, to engage the, the community and the audiences. So uh, 
Uh, it is something that each of the festivals have to have in mind also, because it's like, um, um, it's not that it's happening uh, only in the small cities, but it's something that um, I'm afraid it will happen in the near future in all of the uh, places. One additional question, sorry. Uh, what's your programming for this cinema, except the period of your festival? Who is taking care of it? Uh, during the festival or year after, round? after the festival. Um, in, so we did a campaign in 2017, which led us to manage, uh, sign a, a memorandum of understanding with the municipality of Pea on uh, managing the cinema for the next 15 years. So we are managing it until 2032. And uh, because uh, of, um, uh, they trusted us. This is like the best political situation that can happen in this case. I mean, it's, it's an uncommon situation in other cities, but uh, uh, which we still face many problems because we lack a lot of uh, resources when it comes to equipment, uh, but uh, we do yearly programs and uh, monthly programs which uh, um, uh, include films, but also include other activities such as as you mentioned, like uh, getting a behind the scenes of how movies are created, how animation is created, technical support of like providing for new generations, how to project, how to um, how to deal with sound. How we have a sound studio now inside of the cinema, so it's like it is a cinema, but also it, it is serving as a multifunctional center to uh, facilitate all of the processes that involve inside of one film. <clears throat> does, any, uh, does anyone, el anyone else want to add something to what our, our guest just asked? Or maybe we can give the word to the other guests that want to speak? Do you want to add anything to this? Okay, next question. Yeah, thank you, hello. Um, I just wanted to get back to the participatory character of the festivals you were mentioning. I was very interested in um, what you told Rian about that you, after the screenings, do not do only um, conventional Q&A, but also like let the kids participate. So I would be very interested in, in knowing how, like what are you doing exactly? And um, you, I think Jaroslav, were told that you, only, uh, you also have kids moderating. So perhaps you can say two words about that, because we also had the idea, we have a very nice moderator at our festival who's very, um, who's been working for 20 years with children and you proposed that. So we are not very sure if it works out or how much preparation does it need? Like, do they have to be prepared for months or weeks or is it just before the festival? Like, how do you do that? Thank you. Sorry, I, I didn't get the, the first uh, kids uh, there uh, uh, the Q and A uh, thing. Oh, sorry, I couldn't it hear you. For, for you, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you get the same. Um, yeah, our audience group is between four and fourteen years old, so we think a, a, like a traditional Q Q and A is not really suitable for that age. So we try to find more playful ways to 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 um, yeah, let them join in, in what they see. Uh, and for example, this year we worked with a, with a Foley artist. So after the screening, they started uh, uh, to make live Foley uh, sounds uh, with the film they just saw, with certain scenes. Um, so there's a Foley artist who explains about uh, his job and then they have all the materials there and then he asks uh, children uh, to the stage to join him actively in making the sounds. Uh, another thing we had this year was a, a costume developer from the from the film. So he brought all the uh, all the different dresses and suits he used, and the children could also come to the stage and try them on and experience how it is to to make a character and use those those costumes. So we always try to find like an active way to to teach them about film and how it's made, and not just tell them about it. So uh, we think that's really important, playful way. Um, yeah, it depends on the length of the film, and that's also a difficult thing when you see like a feature film, one and a half hour. Uh, I think the maximum uh, time to spend in a venue is like two hours, so then it can be like maximum 30 minutes. But, uh, but we also show a lot of uh, compilation programs of short films, so then that's part, that part is like 45 minutes, and we have another 45 minutes for the uh, interactive program. So it depends on uh, what kind of uh, film they saw. 
As for the young moderators, it was, uh, I admit, it was not an original idea. Uh, my colleague, artistic director, Marketa, she brought it from Lucas Film Festival when she was in the jury. And uh, this concept is going, it's, it's, uh, it's been going on for, let's say, six years. And we, uh, because of it, during, the fe uh, during summer, we organize uh, festival camps. So uh, we gathered uh, our best uh, children uh, and uh, asked them if they want to try it because it's quite challenging. Not everybody can do that, right? And uh, even uh, more when they are very small. But uh, they are heroes for us. And, uh, and sometimes it brings very funny moments because uh, Samuel, who is the youngest, now they are all <laughs> older, okay? Uh, he comes to me, oh, my class is coming to a screening. Uh, I will be terrified. No, 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 no. He just make, made fun of, uh, of him, and it was uh, very nice. And it's very nice to see the class, uh, when the class can see their schoolmates. And uh, f actually, it's not embarrassing. It's, uh, they are, again, heroes for them, because it's really, mm, it's not easy to stand up in front of big audience, right? And as, as for the preparations, uh, you know, we don't want to, uh, we don't want them to tell uh, the kids like uh, one, uh, one paragraph long synopsis. Uh, we want to interact with, it, with the audience. So, hello, uh, welcome to the screening of the Slin Film Festival. You, uh, you're going to see a very nice film from Sweden. So, can you tell us what you know about Sweden? But this is maybe for the, the, the smaller children. Then for the second uh, grade uh, of the basic school, you have to tell something more, but uh, this, the interaction is uh, the, the, the most important. But I don't think the preparation is, uh, is, not, uh, is not, it's not so difficult. So uh, we started with four kids, and then everybody wanted, wanted to be a moderator, but they found out it's not easy. And now we have uh, like uh, four kids, five kids, uh, standard uh, number of moderators. Yeah, okay, thank you. But the, the, I mean, doing the not just telling a paragraph, but interacting is the real difficult part. So is it just in the summer camp that they are prepared, like one week or something, or how long uh, are they prepared? No, 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 they, they prepare before the festival. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, because we, we already know that they are very good uh, okay, yeah. in performance, so we trust them. So it's then up to them how, yeah, to, yeah, okay. how, to, perform, uh, how to perform the, the introduction. And, uh, uh, okay, I, I go and watch them. I can tell some comments. They can improve their performance, mm -hmm. but uh, they have uh, freedom of their... Um, natural performance okay. of, of kids and youngsters. And they also do the Q&As after the film with the guests? Yes, okay. yes. Wow. Uh, before <laughs> that, I was a bit uh, skeptical if they can do that, but I tried once, one year, and now they are... Uh, of course, uh, it takes more preparations, but they know that there will be delegation, and uh, sometimes they see the film, they're going to moderate and they can ask their own questions instead. When, because uh, sometimes the class and the kids are, uh, are uh, shy to ask, so they start the conversation and they ask very interesting questions uh, in the name of, of the kids. Well, yeah, I think it's a very... Um, rich, rich uh, uh, topic to debate because we are really looking for strategies okay, to uh, rebuild a relationship that has broken in some way. So I think it's very important. Anyway, uh, there is, any, is there any other uh, question from the audience? If not, I have a, another question for my colleagues here. Because um, I was taking inspiration from all the questions that have issued also from our guest here uh, in the third row, because I think um, a crucial aspect of uh, cultural mediation, film education, and the role of festival is also the dialogue with the rest of the value chain. Um, recently, the new Creative Europe program has been launched, the new Creative Europe program that goes from 2021 to 2027, and uh, one of the key lines of this program concerning some calls 
especially related to promotional activities, is the dialogue with the value chain because it's a key it's a key aspect because um, we are accustomed to to watch to see at promotional activities as something apart from the production from distribution from exhibition and but it's a really a key topic because uh, for 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 some reasons because uh, it assures that film education as a as a, an, an acknowledgement as a and the recognitions towards the rest of the workers in the film sector and audiovisual sector, and also because dealing with uh, uh, audiences, it, it can mean, uh, okay, film education means to educate audiences, but they're not just audiences, they're also consumers. So it's not an easy question to face because we're talking about something that has to do with the same uh, target, that it's at the same time a citizen, someone who is on its way, her way, his way or to education, and someone who deals with a commercial market. So it's not an easy, an easy, an easy uh, target to handle, and it gives us a responsibility towards it. And also because uh, um, it deals with also other aspects related to impact of the activity, because I've seen that in the places in which festival has stronger connection with local authorities and local cinemas, and uh, local um, stakeholders, the festival has a better sustainability uh, perspective. So I would like to uh, ask you to ask yourselves how uh, a festival, your festival, but the festival in general, can empower the relationship with the value chain. I've seen today a very good example from Chinekid about make, creating a dialogue between, between uh, developing projects for films and or young audiences, but I really would like to invite you to reflect upon this and how uh, how festivals can empower uh, the relationship, the value the value chain, and how the relationship with the value chain can empower the festival. I can say something maybe about this. Uh, um, the importance of supporting young filmmakers. We see, we, we have seen um, for uh, many years that we have a lot of uh, short films produced in Sweden for uh, a young audience. But then something is happening. We don't see that many feature films for uh, children and uh, young people. We don't have any film education, especially focused on that target group. So I think we as a, as a film festival, we, we uh, have an important uh, mission to uh, uh, focus on these talented young filmmakers that, that uh, are making content for a young audience so they uh, get this feeling that this is important, this is something I will continue with. Uh, we have to try in all different ways to make the status of uh, children's film higher um, so they don't move on to making uh, crime series uh, or uh, thrillers or uh, mainstream. mainstream films. So uh, for me that is, that is one thing uh, important. How can we put the light on these talented young filmmakers making short films for a young audience and try to uh, make them continue in a good way um, making films for the young target group. Uh, when I talk about the festival, it's something that I always say in regards to our sp uh, festival specifically and in regards to the medium of animation in Kosovo in general. So in each of the countries where an animation festival is happening, you first have the school where uh, students can go learn how to do animations, then the school is professionalized and they start producing animations and a lot of animations are produced. And then you start a festival in order to provide them the opportunity to be screened inside a festival and uh, all the benefits that a festival has. In our case, it was completely the opposite. So we started the festival with no production, zero production of any animations in Kosovo. 
Then we open to school, which is a non-formal education program. It's not formal, so it's, in, it's not institutionalized, but has, uh, now pro uh, has now graduated more than 60 students of the animation academies that it has. So it has provided them the ab ab ability to learn how to do animation, basic animation. Uh, where out of those students, 60% uh, of them have gone abroad to study animation, like uh, as a bachelor's degree, and 40% of them have started to do their own animations. Now, uh, this last edition of the festival, we had uh, productions from Kosovo, uh, like five productions from Kosovo that are not traveling to other festivals around the world. So um, I think that it's, uh, what I feel uh, mostly is that uh, it's, it's not that it is our responsibility as a festival to contribute towards this, but it's also the circumstances into which each one of us operate, operate in their own country, but also in their local aspects. And uh, it, it falls under our responsibility as festivals to provide these opportunities uh, for uh, everyone and uh, to make them available there uh, in order uh, to um, invest in the future generations that are going uh, to contribute to the bigger question, uh, to the bigger topic in this case. So. Um, I think for us at Cinekit, we also really try to be the connection between the children's film industry and, uh, and the target group. So for example, during our festival, we organize a director's lab, script lab, uh, in which one part is that the uh, children themselves can give their opinions about the scripts that have been written or um, the topics about the, the, the films. And also throughout the year, um, we, we organize test screenings for, for producers uh, where we show the film uh, to the children when it's not finished yet, so they're in a, in a first edit phase of the film, so they're really uh, use the opinions of the children also in, in making uh, uh, the films. And I think I see that as a task as well uh, as a, us as a film festival to really be the connection between uh, the children and, uh, and the industry. Well, thanks. Uh, well, it, it arises to me, uh, brings to me to another crucial topic that is quite general, but it's, I think it's a good setting to discuss because we, we, we all come from different countries with different uh, institutional situations. You just told that there's no like public support in Kosovo to uh, animation production or to uh, training for professional and tertiary uh, training uh, for filmmakers. And you were mentioned in the very beginning that there are people in Netherlands, like in Italy, that the 13 years old have never gone to the cinema or have never seen like very important national heritage films. I've been, I've, I've met lots of people of 17, 18 years old in Italy that have never seen like Paisa or uh, Roma Città Aperta, which is quite incredible because it's part of a common, let's say, moving image literature as it was written in a document that was released in 2003 in Saloniko, in Thessaloniki. Uh, which is one of the very first act at a European level about film literacy. So my question is about how we can engage in or, or, or what, uh, according to your opinion, the public and national authorities should do in order to acknowledge film education in the school curriculum or as a non-formal educational activity. And I know it's quite a complex matter because in Europe we have been that there have been some steps that have been done forward uh, towards the recognition of film education as a part of uh, an overall uh, strategy concerning film and concerning education. It, but I think you, I, I guess you have all different situations in your countries, so I really would like to understand what's your advice uh, at a national level or not only in order to uh, recognize film education as a part of an educational system or a cultural system uh, that promotes the creation and the, uh, the, and, and the widespread uh, circulation of uh, films. Yeah, so uh, in our case specifically, uh, we are a population, like the Kosovo population is 1.7 million. 
And uh, um, so it's a very small <laughs> country. But uh, in our case specifically right now, the Ministry of Culture uh, has put film as a national treasure. Uh, this is due to the case that the festivals, such as ours, but also DocuFest, which is the um, international documentary uh, uh, festival which happens in prison, but also um, we are in total three festivals that we are, have contributed towards the education of these generations, the new generations. And uh, Kosovo right now is producing a lot of films that are traveling to festivals. We have had a, a premiere uh, last uh, during summit at Locarno Film Festival also. Uh, so it's, um, we have currently a film from Kosovo has won also three Sundance main awards. So it's like um, we have seen and also the uh, institution, the national, uh, like the national level has seen the importance of film, but also has seen the importance of film education. So um, it all around uh, the advocacy part that as so us, such as festivals, have also as a responsibility in advocating towards uh, film education, but also uh, providing uh, these uh, um, um, these uh, um, spaces where, and also education uh, platforms where they can learn to create, uh, uh, I mean, to create films and uh, um, achieve these kind of results. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone? Um, well, actually, in the Netherlands, the, the government invest, invested quite some money uh, two years ago uh, for film education. So now we have uh, nine film hubs throughout the whole country, regional film hubs and uh, a network uh, of film education. And all the festivals and all different kind of uh, film education organizations are part of that network. And uh, the main goal of the, of the network is to get film education uh, in the curriculum uh, of school, schools, so not only in a, in a project way, but really like structured way in the curriculum. Um, and they focus also uh, mainly on the, on the teachers. Uh, so they focus on teacher training centra and, and uh, um, yeah, to help them with their professional development and also teaching about film and making that like a, a structured thing in their in their lessons, um, so I think we're quite lucky with with that investment from the from the government. But we're still uh, uh, developing. But um, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, the very last uh, informations we have about uh, national situations across Europe uh, go back to 2012, when for the first time the very first uh, report on film education across Europe has been released. It has been curated by the BFI on behalf of the European Commission. The name of this report is Screening Literacy, Film Education in Europe, and it drafted the very first uh, state of art of uh, film education across countries in formal and non-formal education. It's quite an old-fashioned <laughs> report now, and 10 years have passed. Uh, but I, I would like to, I, I, I'd be very interested in knowing any more, like something more about national uh, local situations across Europe. In Italy, the situation has undergone relevant changes in the last uh, three, four years after the approval of the national new law uh, in 2016. But let us uh, understand a little more from Czech Republic. Uh, as, as I said something uh, a little uh, uh, at the end of my presentation, the situation in the Czech Republic is not about film education, is not very good. But there is this hope uh, of, uh, in the form of this audiovisual uh, association uh, for uh, film and audiovisual education, uh, which gathers uh, uh, teachers, lecturers, and uh, all enthusiasts who want to uh, who want uh, film education to be in the official curriculum because it's in formal education uh, these days in the Czech Republic, and. Uh, Still, for example, it's not clear uh, who should be the garant if, if it is a ministry of culture, of it's it's a ministry of education. So it's a kind of a, a kind of a mess. Uh, but um, uh, there is a small group of uh, enthusiast uh, teachers who uh, lead film education in their uh, uh, in their optional time. And uh, I think everything starts uh, in the university of implementation of film education or media education uh, and the pedagogical studies. 
And in the meantime, uh, there are some workshops like uh, in uh, every other countries for, uh, for teachers and for lecturers. And uh, this association, they recently applied for funds, some Norwegian funds. They got it and uh, they start uh, 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 in the new year, they start online workshops for uh, teachers. Um, for uh, both who want to deal with uh, film practice, who want to teach uh, children how to make film, and who want to teach children how to talk about film, how to analyze film. So they will be given this online uh, online workshop uh, where can, uh, and the garants are uh, companies, com companies and organizations that are involved in informal education for a long time. So uh, fingers crossed, and hopefully uh, it will get, get better in the future. Yeah, we, we have a structure with 18 uh, regional resource centers uh, covering uh, um, the whole uh, Sweden, and, and all of them uh, um, have this mission to work with film education. So uh, it's it's like a good uh, good base. But as I mentioned before, we would need some more direct uh, formulas in the curriculum because now it's mostly uh, gen more general formulas. Um, uh, there is also a possibility to apply for, uh, we have this school cinema, uh, so you can apply for money at the Swedish Film Institute, and, and uh, that is also something that the regional resource centers are uh, working with to, to support. Um, and now they're also starting up a project with uh, universities that are educating teachers, so that is like another way to to go, if you cannot change the curriculums, you can maybe change the teachers' education, uh, so they will get more uh, film education on their schedule. Uh, is, if there is any question, please don't be shy, because it's like an open discussion, as you see. Uh, we'll be very keen on that. Anyway, uh, I think talking about national... Christiana. <laughs> yes, I have a question. Um, reg ahead. Regarding the relationship um, between the teachers and the festivals. Um, you talked about the instruction of the teachers and uh, before you talked also about uh, how difficult it is to involve teenagers in, uh, in cinema, to call them to your festival, etc. Um, in your experience, how do you work with teachers? Uh, which is your relationship as a festival with teachers and which kind of connection you uh, you use in this on this topic you stole the question from my mouth <laughs> no it's nice because it, talking about national strategies means talking about school and talking about school means talking about teachers and talking about teachers in film means talking about how to engage teachers before engaging the students, before it's not the answer to the missing things we have in the uh, formal curriculum, but it's something that helps and support circulation of uh, film education practices across schools, even if not formal education. In Italy, for example, uh, last year, uh, our, a, a special national program for teacher training has been launched during the pandemic, it was quite a harsh program. I was in the scientific committee for that. Uh, it was held by Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Education, and uh, the, the, the purpose was to train around 27,000 teachers, it's a three teachers per, per each school. We have more or less 8,000 schools in Italy, so the purpose was to train, train those teachers. Those numbers have not been reached because of the um, pandemic. Every, every, every training was done by online. It was a 25 hours training, so it was quite uh, complex. And it was based on film specificity, so film language and film uh, uh, aesthetics. It was based on uh, the value chain, so, get, so that teachers could acquire more information and more skills about the structure of value chain on film and audiovisual and ICT, because now film and audiovisual is also a matter of ICT, as you said in your presentation. 
and also another uh, uh, educational, uh, another training activity on management of a project, of a school, of a film education project into a school, which is not so obvious. So I would like to relaunch the question of Christiana and please, please tell us about uh, not, not, uh, not only about the practices you have in your country about uh, teacher training, but what you think should be necessary to train teachers and how those teachers could be trained if there is a demand for teacher training in your country and why it's, it, okay, why it's useful. We all know why it's useful, but how it can be formulated in order to be useful. I'm not sure that our uh, experience in Italy is the best, but it's the first experience we had in, at that level, at the national level. So my question is about how and why and when and for what to te train teachers for <laughs> film education. say something. Um, as I mentioned before, we have this regional uh, film hubs, and one of the goal of the regional film hubs is to connect the, the schools with, uh, with cultural organizations. And what we do, for example, and what, what I think uh, works, um, is connect schools to like film coaches. So, so locally you have all these uh, people which can be filmmakers, media makers, um, uh, who help the schools uh, adjust their curriculum and, and using film in it. So, so they connect like uh, one of the film coaches to one of the schools locally. So it doesn't feel like uh, uh, someone from uh, the south of the Netherlands has to learn to what we as scenic kids from Amsterdam tell them, but they're like locally matched to, to a film coach. And I think this personal approach uh, works. Um, and it depends on, on, on the school if they have like the, in, a, in a really intensive way or if it's just um, like in, in a coaching way where they can they have a one hour a month in which they try to uh, uh, get inspiration and ask their questions about how to uh, integrate film in their in their lessons. But that, that is uh, one way of how we do it. So. Uh, yes, I think uh, Jersey, uh, in his presentation, he mentioned this uh, two types of education, education through the film and education for the film. And, and uh, from my experience, it's, uh, uh, it's easier to, uh, to uh, attract the teacher by working with education through the film. So that's what we try to do a lot with all the films that we screen. We look at the curriculums. We uh, find different uh, topics uh, in the film, and we can say this, this could work for uh, geography in year uh, two or three in school, and this could work in, uh, for history. And that is a way of uh, attracting uh, the teachers uh, to get interested. Uh, I would wish that it, we, it, it could be more education for the film that uh, would also be uh, attractive, but I, I think that that is not the case, uh, uh, not from my experience. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Daniel and uh, Jersey in this case. In our case, also specifically, it has been um, education uh, the, through arts in general, through the medium of animation. So what we do is that throughout the year from September until June, we work with schools on going to schools and working with specific teachers to screen specific animation f animations from the database of the festival that we have that deal with one topic, specific topic that they can integrate within their curriculum or within their lecture that they have for that hour. In that case, that helps and the teachers are more welcoming into accepting this kind of uh, collaboration. But what we do then is then also invite those specific teachers also if inside of within our cinema where we screen our choice of film in this case, which would be more an artistic one and discussing not something that falls in line with the curriculum, but something that we, we want to also uh, present to the kids in this case. This has been a vice versa process that we have implemented uh, in, uh, in the city of Pea and in the schools in the region of Pea that have um, proven to be, sorry, that have proven to be uh, very helpful and uh, also uh, keeping those teachers specifically engaged into these kind of processes. 
Well, okay. Um, okay. Um, okay, we've been talking about, we've been talking about um, national strategies, we've been talking about teacher training, but I think, um, I think a key aspect in this is also cooperation, because um, uh, you were talking about the National Association of Film Education in Czech Republic. I think that can be an interesting issue, because if you want to obtain something from government or to advocate correctly, it's can, it can be a nice way to create, a, at the national level, some coordination. Uh, I think this is a nice occasion of cooperation. Uh, that can be more occasions of cooperation around specific programs, around specific projects like Castellinaria. But I would like to, uh, to understand from you uh, what's your idea about uh, international cooperation among festivals, for example, or between festivals and other kind of institution, and how it can empower and improve your activity. Because in my opinion, cooperation is a key uh, is a key topic also to, for example, we discussed about Lucas Festival, which has been a common inspiration for some of us. They, they, they used to work on uh, participatory programming and young programmers since a lot of time. So I think cooperation is a, an important resource, especially now that, uh, and this is quite a positive aspect of the pandemic, having uh, a, a, a discussion with people in other countries is free of charge. It's no expensive at all. You just have you just need to have a Zoom account. It's not like before you had to take plane and to go and stay in a hotel and it's expensive and you have to have a budget to do that. Now it's very simple to have a cooperation, fluid cooperation with uh, partners, with people in other countries. So what do you think about the possibilities and uh, the uh, power of cooperation in pursuing our purposes? I think it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, collaborations a lot. I think it's very fruitful. Uh, don't you I agree? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay. Also, if you had experiences in that that you can maybe share with the audience. Uh, definitely. Um, I think that's why we are, we are here, actually. We are sitting here because of the collaboration and I think uh, especially um, among festivals for children and youth is very important, uh, the cooperation, because, uh, okay, general film festivals like uh, Venice, the films, they are going to distribution usually, um, some art house cinemas, but uh, for children's films and for youth films, there is no distribution nearly, in, especially in, uh, in the Czech Republic, for example. So we have to collaborate, of course, and uh, uh, we've been doing that for, for many years with, uh, so with the festivals around the world. The latest uh, project we released was uh, thanks to COVID, uh, that uh, we came up with a set of short animations, Czech ones with our dialogues. We called it Check the Czechs, and we asked our exotic, exotic uh, countries, uh, festival mates, uh, if we can uh, send them this uh, set of short animations and if they can uh, distribute uh, these uh, animations to their children. So we cooperated with uh, Mexican festival, Indian, uh, Japanese, Korean, uh, uh, Ukraine. And uh, then we, uh, got, uh, we uh, got several videos videos and uh, pictures of Indian uh, children watching okay, on laptop because of the COVID of this Czech film, so it was it was really, really wonderful. And um, you, you may know that in India, it's uh, usually with everything, a uh, very high number of uh, spectators. And uh, so it's, uh, we can get its inspiration at some other festival. We can uh, promote uh, our national films. Uh, we can go to, to a festival uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Netherlands and promote uh, Czech films for children and youth. It's very, very, uh, very important uh, because I think it helps with the promotion when Czech uh, audience hears or they, they can see the laurels from other festivals that they, okay, it must be good, so okay, let's take children and watch it. So I think this is, this is very helpful and uh, 
we help uh, each other with some recommendations. Uh, we can, I can ask, okay, can you recommend some good Dutch film for for our festival? Can you recommend some good Swedish film for our festival? So, it's it's, it's really really important. So yes, let's collaborate, please. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, if you don't have any other comment on this topic, uh, there is another one that I raised before, before, because we've been talking about, I call them collateral activities, let's say, meaning something that is a, a side of the screening itself, of the, activity, of the classic activity of the festival of submitting a proposal to the audience of a film, uh, which is also about creativity, because we've been speaking about um, engagement of... Uh, um, engagement of younger audiences. Maybe we can think about also engagement of teachers in co-programming. I was <laughs> wondering that may be also an idea of uh, like training. But mainly, I was I I don't, I'm not, I don't remember who spoke about this, but there was someone speaking about a section of the festival in which uh, a group of young audiences showed the films they do. Uh, and there are festivals in across in Italy uh, and across Europe that work on that. And I think it's a nice occasion also to uh, pursue that objective we were talking about before, like uh, putting the, the, the passive user of the festival at the very center of the organization of the festival, of the activities of the festival. So in your opinion, what's the relationship between creativity in film and film promotion? What your festivals do? Uh, in this, if you do something or if you think it can be interesting to put together the two formulas for a festival. It's late. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I missed one question. Okay. Um, sorry? Me. You, as Me. As a, as a oh, I, I only prepared questions, okay. not, <laughs> not answers. I like questions very much more than <laughs> answers. Anyway, uh, I think we can can write go, Cristiano. Yeah, I have a last question yeah, if uh, you don't you. mind. I also have one, but <laughs> do yours. I don't go, go on. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. No, we, we already a little bit discussed about that, but we were discussing about um, collaborations. And um, at Castellinaria, we, we really want to continue with this Castellin Europe program, with this collaboration with you. And uh, it would be great to involve also other partners. So my question is, uh, could any uh, of you uh, nominate another partner festival to invite in uh, Bellinzona the next edition of the Castellin Europe. No. No. Official statement right now. Yes, yes. sure. Yes, official statement uh, right now. 10 seconds to think about <laughs> it. No, but I, uh, we, we, uh, speaking of the collaborations, uh, we are involved in this uh, Nordic collaboration called uh, NOISE, Nordic Junior Sessions with uh, the aim to uh, support uh, Nordic filmmakers um, making films for children. So I can nominate all my Nordic uh, festival friends, uh, but I need to only nominate one festival. It can no. be a region and no, association. Can, we will discuss it later. If I you can want nominate uh, Ulo International Film Festival in Finland. Uh, in Kosovo's case, what we collaborate, uh, we collaborate a lot with DokuFest, uh, which is uh, the international short uh, uh, and feature uh, documentary festival. So they do um, two pro two programs when it comes to the education. Uh, one of them is that they have started this pilot project that now is in the second phase of integrating uh, short documentary uh, films into the curriculum of specific schools. So they are working with teachers and the teachers are complying into integrating films as uh, supporting material, audiovisual materials into, um, into specific subjects. But they are also working uh, uh, with the production uh, of the young filmmakers. Uh, uh, so they are uh, engaging young filmmakers and uh, um, 
teaching to them how to create uh, short uh, uh, documentary films and they are also producing those uh, films so I think they would be perfect for this. My nominations. Okay. Uh, to be polite, I would like to nominate two festivals, one in Italy and one outside Italy. The one I nominate in Italy is a festival uh, about a, a film uh, type, film genre, that I think is very important in education, but it's not very common in educational projects, which is documentary and non-fiction film, and it's the Festival dei Popoli which is a very beautiful festival. Uh, now there is a brand new director who's been uh, appointed last year and is a very, very, very uh, skilled uh, professional. And uh, so at the national level, I think we can more explore a little more the documentar documentary in education. While abroad, we, I nominate Lucas, which has been already nominated because they, uh, they, they, they use this model of participatory programming since a long time. We have that a very recent collaboration with them for a project we are running on uh, young programming. It's a brand new project, like an experimental project. We have um, we are launching um, thanks to uh, Europa Cinema, the network of cin film theaters, and in collaboration with the, the European Commission. And they are partners of this project also. So these are my nominations. Um. I would like to nominate Jeff Festival in, the, in Belgium. That's the one we uh, work uh, together with the most. And I think they're really good, especially in their uh, education uh, part already for a lot of years. Uh, so we also learn a lot from them. And uh, we work together a lot for the Media Lab as well in develop developing the workshops. Um, so yeah, that would be my uh, nomination. <laughs> I, s I would suggest two, one remote. <laughs> uh, I would suggest the Indian Film Festival uh, because I think it's, it, it would be interesting to, because now we are concentrating on Europe, but uh, there are many festivals around the world. And so I would just suggest uh, Jitendra Mishra, Smile Film Festival. I visited uh, it uh, some time ago and uh, the audience is very, very special and very, very nice. So I think uh, he could be maybe just uh, online a uh, very good example of kind of exotic uh, work with audience. And from Europe, I would suggest uh, uh, Dim uh, Dimitri Spiro from Olympia because this festival is really old and uh, Dimitri Spiro has been running this festival for a long time. So maybe it would be nice to invite them. But it will be before their festival, so maybe it will be the same with Yerji. <laughs> So these are two nominations. If it's okay, we can, uh, Christiana, also give me your advice. We can close the session. We, I think we explored lots of aspects. I, my, my questions are over. Uh, I just have one to finish, which is the very complicated one. <laughs> of course, there, if there is any question from the <laughs> destroyed audience, <laughs> You can do it, but uh, I think the very last question, which has flown, it's in the air since the beginning of the conference, is if if you can guess what the relationship of the of the of the audience with cinemas as a place is going to be, as we are going to come out of this period, hopefully, how it's going to change, if people will go back to the cinema because they miss it, and they didn't maybe they didn't recognize they missed it before cinemas were closed. So a psychological paradox, I don't know, but give me your advice. And then in a couple of years, we'll meet again and see who was right. I think it will be more important than ever to be together again and to meet in the cinema. And that is what we should uh, focus on to really create use the cinema as a great meeting place uh, for a lot of different people uh, just to uh, see each other and uh, meet the uh, film directors and uh, and also to uh, add 
additional events to the film screenings. I think that is something important because as we mentioned before, only going to a movie theater, watching some strange film from Ukraine will not attract a lot of young people. But if you have also, I don't know, someone uh, from Ukraine uh, doing a dance performance in the cinema foyer or DJing, or you have a break dance crew or whatever, and also a discussion after the film and uh, a lot of other fun things going on connected to the film, then uh, I think that is the future. Okay. We apologize with the wide Ukrainian delegations watching us uh, via Zoom. And uh, please give us, give us your advice also. Um, yeah, we did this impact research this year uh, with, uh, with uh, some of the children who went to the festival. We had one question. Uh, what would you change if you were the boss of Cinekit Festival? And there were three things which were mentioned the most. Um, free popcorn, a disco at the end of the screening, and free iPhones. So <laughs> maybe we can do something with that. <laughs> food Advice is from super the children. important. Also. Sorry. Uh, food is uh, very important. I would say that is something that we uh, always hear when we ask uh, the young audience what is a free, free food. It's important, I think. I think it's okay. We can close the session. Christiana, if you want to make a final remark on that. I just want to thank you very much. Thank you all. and. Um, I hope that it was useful also for our audience in the room, at home, and I'm looking forward to continue this collaboration, to meet again, to meet with you, but I was thinking about the conference to meet with teachers too, and uh, we have to create this circle of collaborations and to make cinema and film literacy grow together. Thank you. Um, scusate, riprendo il microfono per i docenti che hanno bisogno.